How long have I known you, Richard? Oh, Eight uh, years. Every time I've had lunch with you, uh, there's been a reason. Last week, the building fund stood at 92,000 pounds. As your charity committee was the major contributor, I felt uh, you had to be informed of a certain situation. This morning, the accounts were re-examined. Over 50,000 pounds is missing. 50,000 pounds? Missing? Uh, you mean stolen? Professor Ballard, as chairman of the fund, is authorized to sign checks with my counter signature. We had the bank manager here this morning. My signature has been forged on two very large checks. By Professor Ballard. There can be little doubt about it, I'm afraid. That's incredible. Have you notified the police? I want your permission to let me handle this. Uh, we're anxious to avoid bringing the police in. However, if you were to insist... Well, as master of college, I want you to do what is best. Well, I... It just doesn't seem possible. It's been a, a nasty shock to us, as you can imagine. I see, it had been you. Richard, when my committee handed over the check, it became the property of the college. That doesn't mean to say that. Like, I know how important this new building is to you. You leave it to me. I'll see what I can do. Somebody's going to have to tell his wife. You mean you know him? As soon as we saw his car, swerve off the road. He's from one of the colleges. His name's Ballard. Professor Ballard? Yes. This is where he worked. He was a very brilliant, some 
somewhat erratic anthropologist. Erratic in what way? Well, for example, he'd formed this new theory about the migration of ancient peoples from America overland through Russia and into Europe. Oh, they've been working on that one for years. Yes, unfortunately, he had uh, no evidence to support the theory. Specifically, what kind of evidence would it have taken? This kind of thing. A skeleton or a skull, or at least a few bones, found uh, at the right time and in the right place. Well, then, essentially, it remains an unproven theory. Hmm? Yes. And in the opinion of his fellow anthropologists, a rather improbable one. That's not fair! There is nothing improbable about my husband's theory, Mr. Bradley. Uh, it was Stella. a brilliant deduction of all the known facts. My condolences. But according to the master, there are some gaps. Well, if you're dealing with events that happened 50,000 years ago, there are bound to be gaps. Apparently, the academic establishment couldn't grasp that fact. Do you mind if I take some of his personal papers? No, of course not, Mrs. Bellard. Thank you. Ah, Mr. Bradley. Mrs. Bellard was herself an anthropologist for her marriage. She became very involved with her husband's work. What is it? You found no trace of the missing money? No, none whatsoever. And you still haven't informed the police? No. You know our feelings about that. Yes, I know. I was wondering who else might know your feelings. Isn't it? Yeah. You don't remember me, do you? I used to be in the business. Oh, I was a stunt man on some of your pictures. Oh, yeah. Bill Marks. Sure. How are you, Bill? Oh, scraping a living. What was it you were after, Mr. Bradley? Well, I'm looking for a Morris 1100. I could use a steering wheel. Well, the only 1100 we've got in is over there. But it was a bad accident. Went up in flames. That one? Hmm. I'll take a look at it. You can get parts for a car like that from any supplier. No, I'll just look it over. What do you want to go poking around a wreck for? I'll take the whole thing. <laughs> it's not for sale. It's on the scrap list. I'll take it off the scrap list. Give you whatever you want. Keep your money, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> Marks, I want this car. The car's not for sale. Maybe you sell it to me and tell me why you don't want to sell it. If I don't want to sell it to you, I don't have to. Tell that to the police. Would you? Fuck! Ah! Murder! You better tell me or you're going to have to tell it to the police. They could hang an accessory on you. Ah, oh, you got it all wrong, Mr. Bradley. Yeah? Well, it wasn't any murder. What was it, then? I got a phone call. Someone wanted a stunt man. How to smash up a car? I told him I hadn't done stunts for years. Yeah, but you were very good, at I remember. A bit heavy now. But well, you'd pay a lot of loot. Right. Wanted me to arrange a flare-up. Wanted to disappear from the wife, he said. What about body? At least found remains. There wasn't anybody. I can tell you it's the first time I've driven a car with a skeleton sitting down beside me. I can imagine. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, sir. Uh, Eeps. Alive? You think my husband's alive? I know he didn't die in that crash. Nobody did. Is this some trick to link him with the stolen money? You still don't accept that he took it? Of course not. How could I? Well, then you won't object to a police investigation. 
I don't. The college does. Now, if you don't mind, I, I should like you to leave. I don't want my hopes raised by your wild fantasies, Mr. Bradley. My husband is dead. All right. I'll leave if that's what you want. But I'll tell you this. I'm going straight to the master and tell him that I insist on a police investigation. I don't know where your husband is at the moment, Mr. Bounded. But I know he didn't die in that crash. You know that, too. Wait up! You know, uh, I'm just trying to find out what it is you're hiding and why. Maybe I can help. You know? I'm not an ogre. And if you need a shoulder, you've got mine. All right, Mr. Bradley. I know my husband isn't dead. That's better. He telephoned me a, a few hours after the um, accident. What do you say? Just to wait. Is that all? That's all. The way his his new theory was ridiculed, it it upset him, unbalanced him even. I know he's got some plan. I, I don't know what it is. I, I just know he is desperate. Are you asking me not to call the police? Yes. At least not until I've heard from him again. You're asking a lot. You told him. I heard you. Well, darling, I had to say something. Otherwise, he would have gone to the police. Unbalanced, you said. Is that what you believe? No. Of course not. I was just trying to buy some time. For you. Gardner will be here at any moment. Miss Bradley left, they mustn't meet. Well, here's to a favorable conclusion. It'll be favorable. I'd show them. Someone's out there. I've set the dog free. No. Let me. You may be seen. Won't be necessary, Mrs. Ballard. Mr. Bradley, what have you come back for? Well, I thought I'd like to meet your visitor. Visitor? There's no one here. Not now, there isn't. Mr. Bradley, stay away from here, please, for my sake. I did what I could about tracing the car, Jean. It was bought in London earlier this year by a man named Carl Gardner. You do that all yourself? Uh-huh. 
You don't have to go to college. What'd you come up with? Well, not very much at first, but then I began refeeding the computer. And it seems that this fellow uh, wasn't very inventive in the matter of aliases. Oh, so when the computer started spewing off 15 cars and 20 gardeners, uh, you naturally thought you were in the right direction. See, you've got some inflammatory material here, the boys own annual. What kind of a reading did you get? Uh, well, pretty sparse, I'm afraid. We're just hoping that you'll be able to give us some more. There he is. That's a face you can trust. Oh, yes, he's a very sharp dealer. What does he play? <laughs> Practically anything. But his speciality is exporting antiquities to other countries of Europe. Old one? Uh, yeah, oh, yes. Uh, antique antiquities, you might say. As old as that. <laughs> yeah, of course, there's nothing illegal about that, except as far as the Middle East governments are concerned. Embarrass him? Well, politically, of course, it is extremely embarrassing. Yeah. We have to explain to these governments that uh, he's not doing anything illegal as far as we're concerned. Mm. But, uh, mind you, if we could just uh, catch him in something outside the law, there'd be an awful lot of people very happy to hear about it. I've been checking on your visitor last night. A visitor? There was no visitor. Oh, come on, Karen. Why don't you level with me? You had a visitor. His name is Carl Gardner. He's in the business of selling antiquities, which puts your husband in the business of buying with the money that he stole from the building fund. Come off it now, 50,000 pounds for a piece of fake evidence to support his theory. Why do you say fake evidence? Well, because I know. I've been doing some checking on his theories. I've spoken to some of his colleagues, his peers, and they don't believe it. And neither do you, for that matter, if you're honest with yourself. Yes, that's not true. That is simply not true. Karen, you're covering for the man. It's your emotions. My emotions? What do you know about it? No, I don't know anything about your emotions. I know it is easier for me to be objective. You don't live with someone who was sick, someone who tried to kill himself, someone who, who believes that all his colleagues betrayed him. There it is. That's it exactly. And this is his way of proving that they're wrong. Yes, in a blaze of publicity. And so you went through with it. You went along with them, didn't you? Well, I... I mean, when the crash was arranged, I didn't know about the money, but... I did still believe he might be proved right, and I, I couldn't go against him. I, I couldn't. He's sick, Karen. The man needs help, he needs medical treatment. And if you want to help him, you, you tell me when this meeting is taking place. Tonight. Where? Where, Karen? Look, if I can prove to you that this gardener is out to double-cross your husband, would you tell me where I could find him? where he is this very minute. How can you prove it before it happens? Well, I have an idea. I have an idea that there's only one place Gardner can find specimens that would be convincing. see anybody paying 50000 for that, especially when it already belongs to him. Well, when I pulled a couple of teeth out and aged up the sockets, you'll never guess. That's be proof enough for you, Karen. I'm for the police. I'll lose it, Gardner. I've read your file. Murder isn't your league. Did you get to see my file, Mr. Bradley? I don't think I could stomach your file. Well, in there, it's written what's got to be done has got to be done. Or don't you believe me? Use her as a cover. Gee! You're a pretty good scrapper. <laughs> There's a deserted farm just down there on the left. It's a perfect example from the Pleistocene period. Beautiful. I'll make them eat their words. As good as I promised? Better. Good. Now, your part of the deal. Money. Yes, yes, of course. But I need to know where it was found. Exactly. <laughs> it was in Russia last year. 
Yes, but where in Russia? I must know where when I write my paper. Archangel. No, no, not Archangel. It would have been crushed by the ice cap, not Archangel. No, no, it was uh, Kiev. Probably. I want to know the exact spot, Gardner. No wild guesses, please. Listen, you've got the skull. Now it's my turn for the money. It was in Kiev, I tell Don't you. Don't see your Sophia without a certified location. That's no good to me whatsoever. No, 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 no. Gardner! You've got a lot of explaining to do, Gardner. It was my own laboratory, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> my own laboratory. Yes, Professor. I know what I have to do. And when he's well, we'll work together. I hope so. Ballard's progressing very well. It'll take time, of course, but everyone's very hopeful. That's something, I suppose. We're indebted to you, once again. I think I ought to warn you that you're going to be offered an honorary chair. Does it mean I get to wear one of these? I might accept. I'd even wear it to bed. You may regret it. They get very hot in summer. Well, I'll just wear the hat. Ha, ha, ha. 